This is the sumptuous church of St. Oswald in Blankney, Lincolnshire. The lich gate here leads to the church which was rebuilt in the last century, but keeping some of its ancient features. The handsome pinnacle tower is decked with bands of quatrefoils, open-mouthed gargoyles. It would have been lovely to have entered this church, but unfortunately it was locked and the key was 15 miles away and I wasn't prepared to do a 30 mile round trip. Maybe one day I'll come back. Here is a white marble figure of Lady Florence Chaplin, wife of the famous Henry Chaplin, and hereby hangs a tale. She is seen kneeling in a long graceful robe, hands clasped and face upturned, a lovely girl in the bloom of her youth. Between 1820 and 1850, Charles Chaplin, no, the other one, built the hall. He rebuilt the church and the village and laid out the park. However, of all the chaplains, it was Charles's nephew and heir, Henry, who was the most colourful, achieving notoriety through his romantic entanglements of love, known as the Pocket Venus episode. Born in 1840 and inheriting from his childless uncle at the age of 21, Henry moved in extravagant circles, having befriended Albert Edward, the Prince of Wales. And his newly inherited wealth allowed him to cultivate a love of gambling, and he began spending more time in London with Bertie and another firm friend, the grandly named Henry Waysford Charles Plantagenet Rowden Hastings the Fourth Marquis 
of Hastings. With the Prince of Wales now married, Henry and Harry Hastings were two of London's most eligible young bachelors and were on all the guest lists for the best parties. In 1863, they both became attracted to London socialite and renowned beauty, Lady Florence Paget, known as the Pocket Venus because of her diminutive stature and great beauty. Although attracted to both men, in 1864, Florence accepted Henry's proposal of marriage. With the Prince of Wales one of many to offer his congratulations, the wedding was to be the society event of the year. Harry Hastings, however, was never far from the picture, and in his mind, his rivalry with Henry for Florence's hand was not over. On the evening of July the 15th, 1864, he accepted an invitation to join Henry and Florence in a box at Covent Garden for a performance of Faust. It said, Harry spent the evening looking moody and expressionless. The following morning, just a month before their wedding, Florence visited a fashionable store on Oxford Street, having told her father she needed to do some more shopping for her trousseau. Unusually for a lady of her class, she travelled alone. There's some dispute about precisely what happened next and who met Florence and who she spoke to. But what is known is that within minutes of her entering the shop, She'd left by another entrance and stepped straight into a waiting cab. She was immediately driven to the nearby St. George's Church, where she married Harry, becoming the Marchioness of Hastings. Later that day, Florence wrote Henry a long letter, explaining her action, saying, If I had married you, I should have rendered not only my life miserable, but your own also. Over the next three years, Henry's rivalry with Harry Hastings intensified around their mutual interest in horse racing, and it climaxed at the 1867 Derby and centred on the chances of Henry's young cult, Hermit. Henry had bought Hermit for 1,000 guineas at an auction two years earlier, outbidding Harry in the process. By the time of the 67 Derby, Harry had become obsessed by Hermit, convincing himself there was no way Hermit could win. Consequently, he wagered thousands of pounds upon Hermit losing. Ten days before the race, Hermit burst a blood vessel whilst training and Henry was advised not to enter him. However, the injury was not as serious as first thought, and though not fully fit, Hermit entered the race and won it during a dreadful snowstorm, unheard of in June. Harry lost £120,000, approximately £15 million by today's standard, and died a broken man the following year, aged only 26. Florence wrote repeatedly to Henry, begging his forgiveness, but he steadfastly refused. I hope you enjoyed this rather interesting tale from the church of St. Oswald at Blankney in Lincolnshire.